Up next on U.S. Bank Business Watch, presented by the Business Courier, the changing face of healthcare. The Courier is taking an in-depth look at a topic that matters deeply to all of us. Plus, they're already preparing for baseball season 2015 and the All-Star Game down at Great American Ballpark. And making plans and solving problems over punch. Local bartender Molly Wellman is celebrating a grand opening. U.S. Bank Business Watch is next. Good morning and welcome to U.S. Bank Business Watch. I'm Allison Birkin for Peg Rusconi. On the Business Courier front page this week, a special look inside health care, starting with a centerpiece on Mike Keating, CEO of Christ Hospital, the second largest hospital in greater Cincinnati. Before taking the helm at Christ, Keating co-founded a private equity firm, was an investment banker for Fifth Third and a lawyer, having specialized in mergers and acquisitions with Graydon Head. He says those experiences prepared him for his role at Christ at a time when health care reform is reshaping the practice of medicine. How do we bundle products so that employers can manage health care costs on a fixed basis versus a variable basis? And so we're spending much time, you know, working through those deliveries of care. Keating became CEO of Christ last year after being interim chief for six months. He had served on the hospital's board for 21 years and was chairman when Christ bailed out of health, the Health Alliance in 2008 after a two-year legal battle. Business Courier reporter Barrett Brunsman interviewed Mike Keating. He joins publisher Jamie Smith with more on Keating and the Courier's special section on health care. Jamie Barrett. Thanks, Allie. Barrett, thanks for being here. As always, you do a great job of covering health care for The Courier, but this week was a stellar job. I mean, a great look at a lot of different stories. Your cover story this week, though, focused on the strategic expansion plan of Christ Hospital. Talk to me a little bit about that plan. Yeah, Jamie, uh, Mike Keating, the CEO, spent, was very gracious with his time. He spent several hours with me. Uh, one of the things that he talked about was how Christ is negotiating deals with large employers such as General Electric. Uh, and the, their employees and dependents will be able to travel to Cincinnati from anywhere in the nation uh, for uh, total hip uh, and knee replacements. And uh, so that's, that's so some of the news that we break in this story. And how will they be able to, to deal with uh, that influx of uh, new people? GE, for example, has about 300,000 employees. Well, there's a $280 million expansion going on in Mount Auburn, the campus of Christ Hospital. And they're going to, part of that includes putting up a new joint and spine center. Uh, this is going to create nearly 90 new patient rooms as well as new operating rooms for the doctors. So a lot going on in the main campus uh, there at Christ. But Keating did acknowledge when, during I was questioning him, I said, what about expansion? Where else might you go in the region? Uh, they're making a big push into northern Kentucky. Uh, bought the drawbridge uh, in uh, oh, yeah, property right. a while back, and they're going to build a center there. might take a few years. But Keating did acknowledge that they also plan now a medical center in Butler County. Okay. Uh, that he, he wouldn't specify exactly where it would go, uh, but my colleague Tom Demeropoulos at the Business Courier uh, did a little bit of digging and found out that uh, someone had assembled several parcels of land, uh, about 46 acres near the intersection of I-75 uh, and Veterans Highway okay. in Liberty Township. And uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if that, that isn't where the Christ uh, Medical Center ends up ends going up. out there. Well, Butler County has been a hot spot for health care of late. Why, why Butler County? What's going on up there? Well, it, it, it's, it's been a uh, fast-growing population, more than 370,000 people out there. So uh, uh, Christ wants to tap into that. But they're not the only hospital system. Now, Christ is a, is a one hospital system. They, they sort of work as a, a hub with spokes. Uh, but some of the other big players, TriHealth, for example, has got a new uh, group health medical office building in Westchester, a multi-million dollar operation, and uh, also is doing expansion at uh, its Bethesda Butler uh, Hospital in Fort Hamilton. Uh, that, that could total uh, over $40 million oh, in investment wow. alone. Uh, and then one of the other big pushes is by Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. They've got a Liberty Way uh, 
campus. And right now they have a, uh, an expansion that's going to be well over $100 million going there. Part of that will be a proton beam therapy center uh, for research and treatment of kids with cancer. Great. Well, I wish we could talk all morning here. It's a great, great story. And I know you talked to several CEOs of several of the systems, so viewers need to make sure they read the full paper this week. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, and thanks for doing such a great job on the story. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks. Allie, back to you. Thanks, Jamie. John Prout oversees four hospitals and nearly 12,000 employees as CEO of TriHealth. He's led TriHealth since 1998. In that time, the system has expanded to include four hospitals and two more will join January 1st. In late 2015, TriHealth Rehabilitation Hospital is expected to open in Evanston as part of a joint venture with Pennsylvania-based Select Medical. But many communities have not had a specialty focused rehab hospital. So it's a huge trend these days. I think it'll really help us focus on those patients who have special needs, their families have special needs, not dissimilar to what we do with our hospice program. Prout says TriHealth uh, Tri has also acquired many doctors groups recently, allowing MDs to focus on their number one priority, clinical care. UC Medical Center is conducting a pilot project with 20 patients to help determine if tablet computers can improve individual health. The goal is to reduce hospital readmissions because of complications following surgery. That could improve the health of patients and slash costs for hospitals and insurance companies. And so every time they take their vitals at home, it gets portaled into the, blue, into the uh, tablet and then goes right to our computers uh, here at the hospital. So essentially, we feel like we're in their home because we get all their vital signs uh, and get a, get a way of tracking how they're doing in real time instead of just seeing them once a week. About 40% of patients nationwide have to be readmitted within 30 days after having a liver transplant. And Shaw says he hopes to reduce that number to 20%. The clinical trial runs through April and is thought to be the first of its kind. It could be expanded nationally if the initial results prove promising. One of Cincinnati's most iconic downtown buildings has a new owner. Cincinnati native and commercial real estate broker and investor Greg Power has bought the Carew Tower. He actually bought Belvedere Corporation, which holds the Carew Tower complex at the corner of 5th and Vine Streets. Financial terms were not disclosed. Carew Tower was built in 1930 and instantly became the city's most iconic skyscraper. It includes three key components, the tower itself, the arcade, and the Hilton Netherland Plaza Hotel. Improving collaboration is a big reason the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber moved out of its old office in the Carew Tower and into its new digs on 4th Street. The chamber has moved to, into the 40,000 square foot building to better collaborate with co-tenants, which include Ready Cincinnati, the Port of Greater Cincinnati Development Authority, Cincinnati Business Committee, and the Cincinnati Regional Business Committee. In our previous space in Crew Tower, fantastic, uh, great, classic building here in downtown Cincinnati. We had a great view outside, but nobody could see us. So we decided to flip that around, and exactly right, that really got an appeal for the fact that we could have people come in and see us and come right off the street to interact with their chamber and our other collaborators. The former PNC Bank Annex building is owned by a subsidiary of American Financial Group and will house nearly 100 total employees. They have access to a first floor business center and conference rooms and upgraded technology, including 100 gigabyte connectivity from Cincinnati Bell. The Cincinnati Reds are making some big changes to Great American Ballpark this winter to get ready to host the Major League Baseball All-Star Game in July. The Reds are completely revamping the Riverfront Club on the upper level, down the first baseline. They're tearing down the glass windows to make it an open air space facing the field. It's going to have more of a club feel, hopefully very uh, high-tech audio-visual uh, back here in the back part, and uh, it will allow it to be open air so you can hear the roar of the crowd and the crack of the bat. The Reds are naming the new space the Handlebar at the Riverfront Club. It will feature a logo with the old-time Mr. Red Legs Handlebar mustache, and it will keep its spectacular views of the Ohio River. Cincinnati mixologist Molly Wellman and her partners opened their newest bar, Myrtle's Punch House, in East Walnut Hills on Friday. The tavern isn't named for a particular person. It's at the intersection of Woodburn and Myrtle. 
But Wellman and company created the myth of Myrtle, a lady who lived in one of the grand old houses in the neighborhood and threw parties for her friends and neighbors. Wellman says that Cincinnati was planned and built around a punch bowl at the square and compass, whose proprietor was Griffith Yateman. Gateman's punch bowl can still be seen at the museum center. The bar serves punch that patrons can buy in either a cup or a bowl. We have them on dra a draft system, so it's a lot easier. We pre-make them. Some of the punches actually um, need to sit and let all the ingredients kind of marinate together, so it works out perfectly to put them on a draft system. You can get a further look inside Myrtle's by visiting the slideshow on the Business Courier website. Up next on U.S. Bank Business Watch, speaking of new bars, this brewery in OTR is one step closer to opening. And did you shop this holiday weekend? We'll have the local shopping forecast up next. Some news now that's getting attention on the Business Courier website and social media. Victims of an estimated $100 million Ponzi scheme run by Cincinnati advisor Glenn Galemo have filed a new lawsuit against 15 investors who made a profit in the scam. A civil lawsuit was filed on Monday claiming the investors received more money from Galemo than they invested in his Queen City Investments firm. Galemo's victims recently received their first settlement in the case, which totaled $1.4 million. The University of Cincinnati is the first public university in the U.S. to issue green bonds, which it's using to raise $29 million for eco-friendly renovations. The money will go toward a planned residence hall expansion. Green bonds are municipal bonds used to fund environmentally friendly projects. Taps Ale House in Over the Rhine is on its way to making its own beers after its brew house and eight fermenters were delivered last week. Race and 15th Streets were closed as cranes lifted the tanks into a hole in the side of historic St. Paul's Evangelical Church. The brewery should be open by opening day and will have three bars, a beer hall, and private meeting areas. Holiday sales are expected to rise 5.1 percent in Cincinnati this year. The prediction from the University of Cincinnati Economic Center is higher than the estimated growth for the state, which sits at 4.5 percent. It was made based on increased employment levels, higher wages, consumer confidence, and low energy prices. Holiday shopping is also an indication that it's time to look at your investment portfolio. It's a great time to rebalance your portfolio as well as take a look at any realized or unrealized gains. In this morning's U.S. Bank Economic 360, Senior Vice President and Senior Portfolio Manager Minnie McLaughlin joins us to talk about strategies for minimizing capital gains in your taxable investment accounts. She's with Business Watch producer Kelly Leon in the studio. Kelly, Mindy. Thanks, Allie. Mindy, thanks for being here. Sure. So we have about a month until the end of the year. So That's right. what should we be doing in terms of our looking at our por portfolio now in this next month? Sure. Yeah, this is a great time of year to, to take a look at your portfolio and really to get a good sense of where you are in terms of capital gains that you've realized this year. And mm -hmm. That number should be on your statement. Uh, you should be able to see that on your monthly statement that you get. If not, you should call your provider and, and get a good sense of, of where you are. The other thing is a lot of mutual funds, if you hold those in your portfolio, those tend to pay capital gains out about the middle of December, and I've seen a lot of pretty large estimates for expected gains mm. that will get distributed, and, and that's not only from domestic mutual funds and bond funds for that matter, but also some international funds that really haven't performed very well this year, so uh, nobody wants any surprises, <laughs> so you need to kind of jump right on this. No, and what can investors do to prevent these additional gains? Sure. It's really important, I think, to look at each of your holdings and to see if perhaps you have any unrealized gains. Mm you know, where it's worth less than what you paid for. And so to the extent that you have some gains, you might want to consider selling those stocks or even those mutual funds uh, in order to lower your, your taxable uh, situation there. But I think it's important to know that you cannot just immediately rebuy those stocks or funds. The IRS won't allow that. 
they have what's called wash sale rules, and so you need to wait 31 days before you buy those back. Mm. So if you want to stay in the market, what we recommend is that you use exchange-traded funds. They're called ETFs, mm -hmm. traded like a stock, and they're available in almost any sector or asset class out there. So that can kind of be used as a placeholder, so you could reinvest in, in those types of, of vehicles. And then after 31 days, you can make a decision whether you want to go back into those original stocks or not. Um, another thing that you might want to consider is um, if you have any charitable giving that you tend to do this time of year, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people will make gifts to nonprofits or they'll give their children gifts at this time of year. And so we often recommend that you also consider perhaps gifting highly appreciated stocks or even some of these funds that may have big realized gains coming. And uh, that's a good way to rebalance your portfolio, too. And so that's another consideration. And then finally, if you're still looking at kind of a big number there, you might want to call your tax preparer and see if it would make sense to perhaps prepay your real estate taxes or your state income taxes or even accelerate some charitable giving that you might have made next year, you know, just to kind of get that number down. Wow. Mindy, you know so much. Oh, my gosh. Am I, like, <laughs> <laughs> you just gave us so much great information there. Uh, quickly, anything else? Any, any Anything else in your head that is definitely not in my head that <laughs> sure. I, I should know? Sure. Well, there we is, should know. There is one other thing that we, we are still waiting on Congress, you know, no surprise there, but they tend to be kind of last minute Charlie on this. But in the past, Congress has approved um, one other provision for, for those individuals who have IRAs and are over age 70 and a half. So you're, you're in that age bracket where you're required to take a distribution out every year. Um, what may be approved is you may be able to gift up to $100,000 to a nonprofit and avoid having to pay income tax that you normally would pay from, from taking a distribution from the account. So we're hoping that will be approved. I've seen it in a bill, and you know, perhaps that will come to fruition, but that's another kind of tax-saving idea and well, way to rebalance your portfolio. Great advice, Mindy. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks to U.S. Sure. Bank, especially at Thanksgiving. We well, appreciate great. you guys. Great. Thank you. Allie, back to you. Thanks, Kelly. Still to come on U.S. Bank Business Watch, Holidays Downtown. Is the Contemporary Art Center one of your traditions this time of year? We'll speak with the director about why it should be. In this morning's Business Insight, downtown Cincinnati's Contemporary Art Center is planning a million-dollar redesign of its lobby, a project that includes the addition of a cafe where its gift store now sits. Director Rafaela Plato wants to make the CAC public entrance more inviting and lively for visitors. She joins Business Watch producer Kelly Leon in the studio to talk about the renovation and making the CAC part of your holiday. Kelly, Rafaela. Thanks, Allie. Rafaela, great to have you back on the show. Thank you so much for having me again. This it's is a pleasure to be here. Oh, we love when you come visit. This is such exciting news. It Big is. news. And this Big has news. been vi a vision for you for a while. Yeah. You know, I remember when I first came to Cincinnati and saw this incredible building by Saha Hadid. Um, I, of course, fell in love with the architecture, but I also thought that the lobby could be this bustling, amazingly vibrant social space that um, it's not quite, it's just not quite where we want it to be. So yeah. um, we've actually talked about it, talked about changing the lobby and thought about what we could do um, to make that happen for a long time, I want to say for years. Um, but it's only been a little over a year where we looked at the lobby in detail with um, some board members who are in the architecture design world. and. Um, really thought it through in a very complex, very um, um, very multifaceted way. Yeah. And I think we've come up with a really good plan to really turn it into this very vibrant social place that we've always wanted it to be. And you'll start construction after the in first January, year, yeah. and then it's only supposed to take about three months, mm -hmm. is what I read, is that right? Yeah, it's not really construction. I mean, we're mm -hmm. adding a design and an artistic layer. layer. So the, the contractors talk about FFE, fixtures, furniture, and Equipment. Uh, equipment, exactly. Yeah. I always yeah. want to say electricity, but it's <laughs> equipment. You're right. <laughs> I'm going to get it right at some point. Um, so it's, 
yeah, it's it's a fairly short construction period, so yeah. to speak. And with everything that's going on in mm -hmm. that corner, I think it's so exciting with 21C, yes. with the Aronoff yeah, Center, yeah, yeah. With so close to Fountain Square. So uh, what will this bring to downtown, with the, the additional contribution of the CAC to downtown? You know, this? we all, of course, um, want to claim that the CAC was the facilitator for downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, the Aronoff was there, but I think the, C the CAC was a major catalyst for so many restaurants and so many condominiums and hotels to pop up in downtown and now that our lobby is dark most of the time especially in the evening we really felt like that we are not participating in the way that we should and we want to in this incredible buzz that we call downtown Cincinnati these days mm -hmm. so uh, we are turning the lights on mm -hmm. uh, we are finally turning our lobby into the movie trailer of the CAC like people who walk by in the evening or during the day will immediately recognize the mission of the institution um, which is a little harder to understand right now because the lobby is fairly dark and mm -hmm. you know it's just not alive. Right. So Saha's vision was always for this what you call the urban carpet to be Cincinnati's most vibrant public plaza mm -hmm. and um, this is what we want to make it. it. It means bringing sort of the, the artistic vision from the gallery floors into the lobby and the mm -hmm. street, street light life from the city into the lobby and sort of merging these two. And you are open um, in December so this doesn't yes. start till January. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, and we have a full screen that people can go to actually to get details to go to oh, your great. website. Mm -hmm. But people should make the CAC part of their holiday tradition. Absolutely. Yes? And also, what I want to mention, we will continue to be open during construction. Okay. The lobby will be closed, but we have a, a different and alternative alternative entrance figured out, so okay. people will come in through um, behind the scene doors and yeah. spaces that they rarely get to see. Nice. Um, and we have a lot going on between now and the beginning of the year. Yeah, so check out the website, get absolutely. down there in December, and then come back and visit after the renovation. Yes, yes. absolutely. All right, well, thank you, Rafael, so much you. for being here. Allie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Kelly, and thank you for joining us this morning for U.S. Bank Business Watch. We'll be back next Sunday and every Sunday morning at, at 6.30 here on Local 12 and 10 a.m. on The CW. For more business news all week long, visit the Business Courier online and sign up for our daily emails. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Our address is CincinnatiBusinessCourier.com. I'm Allison Burke. Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend.